So most really driven basketball players, the first question that they ask is how much can I do? How much work can I put in on my game? And that is a valid question and it comes from a good place, but a, a better question to ask is what should I not do? What should I not do? And I'll share an example with you from my own life. In my uh, second last year of high school basketball, I asked the question naturally, like, what's the most I can possibly do? And I was training two, three times a day, um, you know, four to six hours a day, I think at that time I was training um, or I was playing almost every evening, plus my own skill workout, plus lifting. And on top of all that, one of the huge mistakes that I made, huge mistake was I added waking up in the middle of, of the night to drink a protein shake and eat two tablespoons of peanut butter. Now, I put on weight so quickly, like real dense muscle mass because I was lifting so much and training so much just by adding this extra meal. I put on so much weight so quickly that I started to actually get, you know, when you're in the weight room and you are doing, uh, when you're lifting and you get a really big pump in your muscles to the point where it's harder to move your arms. Well, that was happening in my legs within the first five minutes of every single workout or game that I played. So you can imagine how uncomfortable that was. I, I added so much weight so quickly that I was literally carrying, my legs weren't used to carrying around that much weight and I was getting a pump. So it was harder to move on the basketball court. And at, to the point where I was like getting cramps immediately, my legs could like, <laughs> it was like playing with a weighted vest on. So that was a huge mistake. And I'll tell you, uh, that actually led to my initial hip injury. Okay, so I had added so much weight. I still remember telling my, my uh, trainer at the time, I said to him what I'd been doing. And he said, what are you thinking? Like, you're not a bodybuilder, you're a basketball player. And if I'm remembering correctly, it was that same workout when he said that to me, where I tore the... Uh, my hip capsule and ended up having surgery. So this led to a whole bunch of back pain. It led to me like way underperforming what it, from what I was capable of. And it all happened from good intentions, from wanting to just do as much as I possibly could to improve my game. And at that point, I thought that like adding a bunch of muscle would help me do that. In the process, I completely ruined um, ruined my body, essentially. And I lost that weight. Um, but in the process, I ended up getting hurt. So short story or point of that story is don't just ask yourself, how much can I do? Ask, what should I not do? Is any part of my training actually going to cause more problems than benefit? And in a lot of cases with really driven basketball players, they're doing a whole bunch of stuff that shouldn't even be there. We have a whole talk on work ethic about what you should actually do and how to structure your training. But this is a a philosophical question that you need to be asking yourself, what do I remove so that I have more energy and more focus and more time and attention to put into the things that are actually getting me the result? And you'll find that <laughs> there are usually a few aspects of somebody's training approach that are generating most of the results and then a whole bunch of stuff that's making almost no difference whatsoever but is taking up time and energy that could be allocated to the things that are really getting you a return and we've used this analogy in the past but it's like an investor who puts a whole bunch of money like 80% of their money into investments that aren't yielding a return when they could take that 80% of their cash, put it into the 20% of the investments that are generating a return and make much, much, much more money. So that's kind of the approach that we're taking with our training most often is we're spreading ourselves too thin, doing a bunch of stuff that we shouldn't be doing. And the question that I'm going to challenge you to ask yourself today is what should I not be doing in my training? What is the midnight protein shake that I need to remove from my own approach? And definitely do not wake up in the middle of the night. If you're only looking to build muscle and you don't care about anything else, your health or performance or anything like that, maybe go ahead and do that, but I don't suggest it. And uh, more, more specifically, ask yourself, what should I remove? What should I not be doing? And hold that question in your mind. You're going to find that a whole bunch of the stuff that you're doing doesn't need to be there. And that energy, focus, time, attention could be allocated to stuff that matters. All right. So I hope that helped you out and I'll see you in the next one. 
Hey, it's Taylor. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, the best thing to do right now while it's fresh in your mind is to head over to deepgame.com and join us in our free masterclass. Now, this is where you'll learn all eight laws of the deep game and all of the fundamentals that you need to know about the part of basketball that's played with the mind. We've had players call this the best hour of basketball learning of their lives, and it's completely free right now. So head over to deepgame.com to join us, and I will see you there.